folks, good afternoon. Saturday, 26th of January. We're in the middle of winter, aren't we? Yes. Well, we've got 50 degrees in here, in this room, right now. So we're not that warm. Anyway. We're doing the best we can, aren't we? Yeah, I'm just finishing off some work here, a few things I was doing, a few little jars. I think you saw me make these. <clears throat> um, a narrow-footed bowl, which I'm probably going to flute. And these little guys, which in the last clip I just showed you trimming them. You didn't actually see me throw these, but you saw me throw the ones that were a little bigger. In fact, they're, they're here, underneath. They're a little bit, I'm keeping them back, keeping them moist a little bit because I've got other work that I've got to tend to. So there's no point in allowing everything to get dry at the same time. So I'm holding these back. <clears throat> in fact, what I'm going to do right now is I was, of those small ones you see there on the wheel head, there are a couple that are ready to uh, work on and I thought I'd engrave them. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the camera, I'm going to sit down there on that stool and I'm going to try to I'm going to drop down the camera. We're going to try to get in, <clears throat> get in for some detail. So just lowering the tripod here. A touch. Something like that. And um, yeah. So there are there are a couple of these. Yeah, this one. this guy and this one and these are ready to flute or ready to I just thought I'd just quickly show you I've got the uh, to to do the fluting I use a just a, a regular hacksaw blade which has got a, a rounded end which is sharp which I've sharpened on the grindstone as well and then also there's a the end where it, it broke off here, which is also sharpened at, at an angle on the on the grindstone, like a 60 degree angle. Okay, so I've got it that. I'm going to use that. Also, I've got here a couple of other implements, a couple of different kinds of peelers. And this one is one where you hold it at the side. And this is one where you hold it the handle part is underneath. So, in fact, I wanted to experiment with that. I bought that at my local cheap shop. So, but anyway, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to flute. So, with anything that, that you're going to engrave like this, it's a good idea just to have a little feel to see how much clay you've got. So, okay, so I'm going to do this one. Right, now what I need to do is, because I want to change the focus on the camera so we get it in nice and, nice and close. So, um, let's see. If I hold one of these there now, I just want to. Yeah, I may just have to drop the drop the legs down a touch, folks. Bear with me. Just reducing the length of the legs a touch. Just because it'll get me 
it'll get us in closer. All right, well, I hope that that is So it's important to get yourself um, situated for this. So let me just do this up. Sorry, my tripod is a bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think, with this one is I'm going to, I'm just going to flute it down the side here. So, and I'm going to use, I'm going to use the, the rounded end here to do that. So, it's important when you do this that you know how to hold, hold the pot. You don't want to hold it in such a way that by accident you... Um, you apply too much pressure to the pot. All right, so, right, I'm just going to start by doing some down, downward strokes. So we'll start here and go down. Now, challenge is always to, to get them going straight, you see. But with this one, because it's a short flute, I think I think we should be okay. Da -da -da. Now it's important to start the flute at the same point that on each one and it's easy to veer off a little bit so in which case if that happens just like with these ones here these latter ones I I I, I, I veered off a bit you see so so you get a line where they all start. Once you get going, you get into you get into a kind of get into a kind of rhythm. Once in a while you want to just stop and have a look. See how far you've got. Whoops, sorry. Knock the camera, why don't you? <laughs> Give the camera a good old boot. <laughs> okay, so. Now we're coming round and we're almost at the point where we're going to meet up with the other one. So at this point you do need to, when you're about two or three flutes from the end, you need to judge how many 
how many flutes, how many more flutes you're going to need. Well, if I only put one flute in there, now it's going to look a bit not too good. So I'm going to have to put two flutes, but not make them, not allow them to be too wide. So we're going to do one. one there and then finally one there and that's it ideally if you, if you get if, if you become a good fluter you shouldn't you should hardly be able to tell the difference where you started and where you finished you see so all right well there's 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 one part of that okay but we haven't finished yet because I've got here the lid. Aha. Uh -huh. Now then. What I want to do with this is I've just got the banding wheel here on my on my lap as you can see because I just want to center this up. That's a very odd thing you're doing, Simon. Why are you doing that? Well, I would normally have done this on the wheel, but as we're down here and I've got everything focused, what I want to do is actually determine where the center of this is. So I'm going to, I'm spinning it and I'm just holding a pencil. You see, that pencil mark. telling me now where where the center of this is and that is important for me to know <clears throat> because because where's my cup of tea I must drink it before it gets cold <clears throat> cheers cup of green tea Because what I want to do is, I want to take I'm going to use the center as a starting point because what I want to do is like a radial fl flute, you see. So it's going to start there and then it's going to come around here. So we're going to start like this. always starting at that same point so I'm engraving the lid radially you see Now, this is not the easiest kind of fluting. But you can do it with practice. In fact, it's dead easy, really. Just take a lid, find the center. and have a go. I tell you, you'll surprise yourself, but you need to find where the center is. So you've got to start, everything starts in the same. Now again, I've got a couple more to do here. So I've got to determine how many more. Well, I'm reckoning like two more will do it. One, two. It actually, <clears throat> what you can do is, 
And what I do usually do, I haven't done it in this case because I forgot to do it, but that is, as you saw me, I, I, dist I, I, I determine where the center is, but I actually put a little spigot there. It's a focal point, you see, because all of these lines, all of these lines, they all converge, don't they, in the center. So it's good to see something there, something definite, where they converge. And I usually just take my trim tool and do a simple little carve it, like, you know, on the wheel going around, like a little, a little knob there in the middle. All right, I haven't done it in this case, but that's just to just to show show you so this one's going to have the 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 radial fluting on the top and the, the straight fluting down the side but i'm actually going to leave the side bit here vacant all right so that, that's just that's just one 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 kind of you know, and there's so many, so much that you can do to these kind of pots. Um, so, you know, your imagination is the only limit, really. Well, there's that one. Now, I've got this fella here. And um, so I'm going to have a go using using this tool, which is... It's not my usual one for doing this, but I just want to experiment really as much as anything. So we're going to take this and, ooh, right, already I'm deciding I don't like it. <laughs> already. So I'm going to go back to my, my original tool, which is this one, and I'm going to I'm going to start peeling potatoes. Are you any good at peeling potatoes? So we're just randomly taking off, you see, pieces of clay like that. All right. And now I, I just, the next, the next ones I do sort of like halfway in between, you know. Now you have to be a bit definite about this as you do it. And the other thing to bear in mind is you've got to have the clay at the right at the right hardness, you see. You see when I cut it off you see, I don't know if you can see, there's a slight shine to the clay. You see that there? You see the light is reflecting. And you see now that's perfect. That's the perfect hardness for, for this technique. Perfecto, hombre. So... No, no, no. All right. Well, there's there's the body. We've done the body. Next, next. Now well, I have to respect the thickness here, and I also got to decide. I'm going to do the side. Ah, now there's a thing you see as I pull as I pull it down and it's tearing away at the base. So that's not good, is it? Maybe it's better I start at the edge. That's often the way with some things. You don't want to pull over an edge because the edge breaks away. So if you start at the edge and go the other way.
Right. Now, in any place where I see that it's broken away, I don't know if you can see just there, just on that edge there, it's broken away a bit. All right, I'm going to use my fingernail. That's right, delve into your toolbox, get your fingernails out. And, oh, and here, those, some of those first ones I did, you see, they, they, they got a bit, so I'm just giving them a going over with my, the back of my fingernail. All right, in other words, just compressing the surface there. Now I'm putting the lid on just to have a, have a look at it, just to decide. I'm just wondering whether I should do the top surface because the top surface is quite flat. I'm just not sure how readily I'm going to be able to um, to do it. Well, I guess I won't know unless I try, will I? So I'm going to start at the edge. Maybe don't take too big chunks. Coming in now to the center. You don't want to have this too thin in the top to do this. Right, well, hmm. Well, you can see there it's broken away, it's pulled out some of the clay. And I'm feeling it for thickness. And perhaps if I take one of these guys, these little shavings here, I'm going to put a bit of spit there, lick on the shaving. All right, put the shaving in there. Now, Now what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to need need, need my, my knife for this now. Fairly nice to just effect a repair there. It's funny, I you know I was using that potato peeler there to. I'm not very happy with the way I've kind of finished it. To be honest with you, it's not exactly as I wanted it. Okay, well, food for thought. I'll work on that one. But anyway, just to, I just wanted to show you that as a as another technique that you can use to engrave or decorate your pots. Yeah, the termination here on the on the top uh, didn't quite didn't quite come right actually so we will see what we can do with that okay so anyway well Well, there's many ways and many different types of uh, that we can carry on and do these. So anyway, just a couple there, maybe just to 
give you some idea the radial fluting with the straight fluting and then the, the peeling with the potato peeler, peeling the clay. That's fun, isn't it? And that can actually come out looking quite nice with a glaze over it because it breaks on all these little facets which are all sort of irregular, rather nice. Please go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. As you will see if you go there, um, we have a, an online auction and um, there's a signed tea bowl of mine there that is for sale. Um, it's got another day. I think it, it finishes tomorrow. Well, it's going to finish actually. It's going to finish Sunday, tomorrow. And this clip won't be uploaded until tomorrow. So, uh, anyway, continue to go there to, to my website because there's going to be always, there's going to be one T bowl for auction all the time. So just go there and check, check them out. And if you like them, put a bid on them. Hey. Keep practicing. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.